What's good everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to another episode of Shook Focus and today we got two juicy ones. We're going to be talking first here about a cyber attack just in case your information may have been compromised. You can go get a jump on that. And item number two slotted, we got some super low-key juicy stablecoin business going on. So <laughs> we're going to get into those. Again folks, remember none of this is financial advice. I'm just here to bring you the news. Let's get to it. Ooh. All right, y'all, let's go ahead. Let's get in this. Let's get into topic number one. I got my ice cold thermos full of water right here. Oh, my thermos full of ice cold water. If you heard ice clacking around inside the thermos and it made you a little jealous, that was the intent. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. Cyber attack on PayPal exposes user social security numbers. Now, what's ironic about this is just within the last year, PayPal was asking people to provide their social security numbers if you hadn't provided it previously. So less than a year after you start telling people they need to give you their social security numbers, you get hacked. And now everybody's information is at risk. See, <laughs> about last summer was when I got prompted and I just decided to choose a different method of payment because PayPal, one of the reasons I used it is because I felt like it was less risky. I could use PayPal to make this payment. And I didn't have to provide as much information. Then they ask for more information and then they get hacked. That's crazy. Like these, the security of the, of these companies, these in this over this last year is just, it's ridiculous. It's just hack after hack after hack. They, Hey, give me your data and we're not going to do nothing to secure it properly. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead. Let's get into this. Uh, cyber criminals made off with the social security numbers and other personal information of about 35,000 PayPal customers after a December credential stuffing attack. This article again brought to us by Bree Fowler from MSN.com. According to a disclosure statement filed with the state of Maine, the attack occurred between December 6th and December 8th of last year and was discovered on December 20th. In addition to social security numbers, usernames, addresses, dates of birth, and individual tax identification numbers also may have been compromised. There is no indication that any financial information was stolen or that customer accounts were misused, PayPal said. The company's payment systems were also not affected. Oh, our payment systems are fine, but your information is gone. <laughs> These companies, boy. <sighs> In a statement released to CNET, PayPal said it has contacted affected customers and offered guidance on how to further protect their personal information. The company also reset the passwords of all the affected accounts and is requiring their users to reset new ones the next time they log in. PayPal is also providing those affected with identity theft monitoring services through Equifax for the next two years. In a credential stuffing attack, cyber criminals bombard online accounts with combinations of usernames and passwords, often stolen in previous data breaches, in an attempt to access as many accounts as possible. So they kind of mixed in what a credential stuffing attack is right there. Just randomly, just dropped it on you. That's a big reason why cybersecurity experts say consumers should always enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. The security measure requires a second form of authentication, like a fingerprint or a code sent to a user's phone, in addition to a password, protecting the user in the event that the password is compromised. So again, that's the little, do you want to register to receive a text message or use the authenticator app kind of deal? In addition, people should always use long, unique, and random passwords for each of their online accounts. Those 
will be less likely to show up in the list of passwords used to crack accounts in credential stuffing attacks. So if you're a PayPal user and you haven't logged in to get your password changed, you should do that. Also, remember, if you store your PayPal password in LastPass, LastPass has been getting hacked. <laughs> so check your accounts, people. Check your accounts. All right, and it looks like we have reached our shameless plug moment. That's right, share your boy out, follow me. Hit me up on Twitter, follow me at Twitter, that's the best spot to reach me. If you are into gaming, you can find me at Should Focus Gaming on YouTube or over on twitch.tv forward slash Shook Focus. I can be found on some other platforms. I'm on Facebook, but not as frequently. Also Instagram, but not as frequently. The next best bet is to probably catch me over on TikTok. If you're into growing your own food, home projects, gardening, and you wanna watch me take that journey, find me over on TikTok. TikTok got a lot of stuff going on right now, so not sure how long that one's gonna be active. I may end up having to move that content over to the website and thus rebuild the website. And speaking of the website, last but not least, if you want to show some support, you can slide on over to the website, pick yourself up a t-shirt or a hat, and of course, you can always hit the cash app. Much appreciated. All right, man. Let me go ahead and get a sip of this ice cold water. And we're going to get into number two. Topic number two. You no, know, I try to say the juicy ones. This article written by Helen Parts. So we got another writer being introduced. To, <laughs> another writer being int introduced to the channel here. Love giving credit to the writers, man. Iran and Russia want to issue new stablecoin backed by gold. This article written January 16th, 2023. Let's get into it. The potential stablecoin aims to enable cross-border transactions instead of fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar or the Russian ruble or the Iranian rial. What we got going on here in this image, man? This one, I'm not going to lie, it, don't, it doesn't pop out at me right away. Is this the sort of the, the gears that are needed to move it? Sort of like the gears of a watch? right the things that make it tick i don't know y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all think the central bank of iran is reportedly cooperating with the russian government to jointly issue a new cryptocurrency backed by gold according to the russian news agency vedomosti or vedomosti i don't know it's, it's russian so i don't know help me out iran is working with russia to create a token of the persian gulf region that would serve as a payment method in foreign trade huh okay so the token is projected to be issued in the form of a stable coin backed by gold according to alexander brazenkov executive director executive director of the russian association of crypto industry and blockchain so russia has a crypto and blockchain association we just got done in a previous video uh, finding out that there are crypto ministries in uh, south america ukraine had one so all these different countries are kind of setting up to make their to make their own moves here it's uh, very interesting. The stablecoin aims to enable cross-border transactions instead of fiat currencies like the United States dollar, the Russian ruble, or the Iranian rial. Okay, so they want to replace those in these transactions. The report notes that the potential cryptocurrency would operate in a special economic zone in Astrakhan where Russia started to accept Iranian cargo shipments. Russian lawmaker Antov Kachev, Kachev, Chikachev, 
If anybody speaks fluent Russian, please let me know in the comment section. <laughs> a member of the Committee on Information Policy, Information Technology and Communications stressed that a joint stablecoin project would only be possible once the digital asset market is fully regulated in Russia. After multiple delays, the Russian lower house of parliament once again promised to start regulating crypto transactions in 2023. So Russia says they're regulating them this year. Iran and Russia are among the countries that banned their residents from using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and stable coins like Tether USDT for payments. At the same time, Iran and Russia have been actively working to adopt crypto as a tool of foreign trade. So saying they banned the residents from using it, but they were using it actively to adopt it as a tool for foreign trade. So ban their citizens and then they decide to go use it. Let's see. In August 2022, Iran's industry, mines and trade ministry approved the use of cryptocurrency for imports into the country amid ongoing internal trade sanctions. So even with the sanctions going on, the local government said that new measures would help Iran mitigate global trade sanctions. Iran subsequently placed the first international import order using 10 million worth of crypto. The Bank of Russia, historically opposed to using crypto as a payment method, agreed to allow crypto in foreign trade to mitigate the impact of international sanctions. The regulator has never clarified which cryptocurrencies would be used for such transactions, though. So, I don't know, folks. Reading over this article, it sounds to me like the goal is to remove the middleman. And the attributes we have here point to the middleman being... The U.S. dollar. I'm going to let you sit on that. <laughs> Lightening the mood a little bit. I was searching over on Twitter. And I, <laughs> I just did a quick search. I searched crypto funny just in Twitter. And then this account popped up. And I actually gave it a follow because I found it. I found it kind of funny. I was finding some good memes in here. But a rare form of rectal blindness. <laughs> Insider trading by members of Congress. And it's got the blind Bart, <laughs> says the government. It says SBF getting away with billions in FTX Ponzi scheme. That's uh, Sam Bankman Free getting away with billions in an FTX Ponzi scheme. The government is still blind, they don't see anything. And then your $600 Venmo transaction, they got the scope out for it, bro. Oh, man. It's. This had me cracking up, man. Uh, check out Crypto Believer on Twitter if you're looking for a crypto laugh. Well, folks, that's all I have for you. And we're going to go ahead and end this one with one question and one challenge. Question. What do you think is going to happen if the middleman gets removed? <laughs> and challenge... <laughs> Come up with a creative way to tell PayPal thank you for compromising your information. Allowing your information to be compromised in the comment section below. And until next time, don't get shook. Stay focused. I'm out. Hear that music? Still fresh. <laughs>